lab view graphing video. Okay, so in this video, I'd like to show you some more about lab view graphing, but we'd like to give you a bit more control over the x axis of your graph. So just to get started, then I already have a while loop shown in my block diagram here, and I've wired a button indicator into the stop condition. So this while loop will continue to execute until I hit click this stop button here. So as far as the graphing goes, I'll go back to the front panel over here. And last time we used a waveform chart. This time we're going to use a waveform graph. So if I drag the waveform graph into my front panel, make it nice and big so we can see it here. Uh, there's where my graph will appear. And I'll just take the waveform graph icon and I'll pull it outside of the while loop now. So this is something different than we've done before. So the way this graphing will work is so I'm going to generate a bunch of data inside the while loop here. And then I'm going to tell it to graph all in this waveform graph all when, the, when I click the stop button. In other words, when the while loop ends. And so we'll sort of do it that way. So let me just call your attention now to the, the, the context help that comes up in terms of the waveform graph. If I look down here now, it says that the waveform graph accepts, accepts something called a waveform data type. And if you look at the waveform data type here, there's three things you can feed this waveform graph. An x naught, which is the first value on the x-axis, a delta x, which is the increment on the x-axis, and a y array, which are all the data points you'd like to plot. So you see, this does give me more control over the x-axis. In particular, I tell it where to start, what the increment should be in x naught and delta x, and the y array, which would be the full data to plot in there. So the question is, is what is this element right here? What is this thing that takes an x naught, a delta x, and a y array, and sort of puts them all together into a waveform graph? Well, it's called a bundle in LabVIEW. So if I go over here into programming and I look where all my structures are and stuff, uh, it's not quite it. Here we go under the sort of the core palette right here. There's one area called cluster class invariant. And if I look very carefully in there, here is that icon right here. This is called the bundle. And so if you look at the context help, you see that on the left side, there's a bunch of things going in. And on the output, there's this thing called the output cluster. So what a bundle does, is it takes a bunch of things and bundles it together into one unit that then we can pass out into something else. In this case, the waveform graph. So if I drag this bundle sort of right up into here like this, I'm going to wire that right into my waveform graph, just the way the instructions sort of tell me. And it looks like it's not allowing me to do that right now. I need to set some more things up for us first. So let me just go ahead and leave that. I'll remove the broken wire. Let's go back into our while loop. So we'll leave that here. We'll get to it in just a second. So what I'm going to do again, just to keep it simple, just to generate some numbers for myself here, is I'm just going to generate a sine wave once again. So I'll go into mathematics down here under elementary and special functions, trigonometric functions. Here's the sine wave. I'll just drag that out again. And just to keep it simple, I'll take the sine of the while loop index, so the sine of 0, the sine of 1, the sine of 2, the number that increases every time the while loop iterates. And what I'm going to do with the sine wave, almost like before, is I'm just going to drag that, not straight into the waveform graph, but I'm going to drag it into the bundle right here. And again, remember, if I look at the waveform graph help, it looks like the y array, which are my sine wave values, has to be this third element down here. It's not x naught or delta x. It's this third element down here. So what I'll do, I'll just grab the bundle. And if I move my mouse cursor to the very bottom row of the bundle, see the way the icon changes in there, I can drag this down just a tad bit, resize it. So it's three elements long. So I can make it look just like the one that is required of the waveform graph. In other words, this bundle that has three rows into it. And the sign data is the one that's going to get wired into that lower or bottommost graph in there. Now, it, it doesn't look quite right so far because this is just a DBL. It stands for double, which is just a decimal in computer lingo. But what I need to do now is I need to go to this node right here where the sine wave data is passed out of the while loop right here. So this block here is called a loop tunnel, and that's not exactly what I want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, in Windows, I'll right click, or in the Macintosh, I'll control click on this loop tunnel here. And what I'm going to do is I want to highlight this thing called enable indexing. Now, if you know anything about computer programming or arrays or arrays, you'll know that indexing or an index is the position in the array where you're going to have your value stored. So by turning that on, this black line turns into little brackets right here. Now, if you look in Python or Java or C, those square brackets are always the reference function for turning a variable into an array. So it sort of turns the values that are passed out of the while loop into an array. So it turns out that generating data in, an, in a loop is so common that LabVIEW actually has built-in functions for compiling them into an array and then passing them out. So notice a couple things. One, the, the thin line indicating single values is now changed to a thick line indicating an array. The loop tunnel is now a bracket. And notice this third element down here in my clustering function is now a bracket also. So it's looking looks just like the brackets that are required of the waveform graph down here. So it looks like I'm on my way. Okay. So what I all I need to do next is now tell this cluster what I want 
x naught and delta x to be, and I can just do that by creating constants in here. So I'll just go up here into the mathematics here, uh, and I'll just create a numeric constant right here. I'll just drag it up here, and let's just say I'll start my x at, for whatever reason, 0.0, .0 something like that. So there's the word I'm going to start, and I'll just go ahead and wire that into the very first element of the cluster. And so see, this is not an array, it's just a single number, so it's mapped in, as in a DBL, a double or floating point number, and that'll be as indicated by this cluster in here where x naught is. The next thing I'd like is my delta x. So I'll go down here and drag another numeric constant up like this, and I'll say that as each data point comes in, suppose I want them spaced by 0 0.1 seconds or whatever I want them to be in this case, but I want my delta x to be 0 0.1. So I'll go ahead and wire this thing and drag this into the second array element right there. So I have my cluster completely set up the way it's described here in the context help for the waveform graph. Now, where I got a broken wire before, I should be able to wire the output of this cluster right into the waveform graph, and the connection should go. And indeed, it does. So there you go. So I have everything set up. I'm generating a bunch of sine wave values in my while loop here. I have indexing turned on. I made this into an array, an auto-index tunnel here, so the while loop will collect the sine wave values automatically for me. I'm piping those right into the, the y-axis values for my cluster here. I have an x naught and a delta x set up and I should be ready to go. But before I do that, let's just slow the thing down just a tad bit so it doesn't run too quickly. I'll go to timing here, and I'll just drag the weight icon in there, and I'll control click on this and create a constant. And I'll have a delay by about 50 milliseconds per loop iteration so the signer doesn't go too fast. So remember, I'm not going to see the graph appear as the data comes in. I only, I'm only going to see the graph after I click the stop button. So let's go ahead and run and see what we get. So I'll just sort of run it there, and in theory, it's generating some data points now. And if I hit the stop button, there's my sine wave that comes up. And notice that the x-axis is now labeled into something that I have a bit more control over right here. In particular, it does look like it starts at 0, and it does look like it's taken increments in 0.1, because there's 0.5 and 0.6 and 1 and 1.5 as it goes in there. So if I wanted this actually to be real time, I could get pretty close to actually doing that in this case here, because I have this, this increment of being 0.1 in here, and I have this loop delay in here. So 0.1 seconds turns out it's going to be 100 milliseconds. So if I make my delay 100 milliseconds, then every data point that gets generated by the sine wave will be spaced by approximately 0.1 seconds or 100 milliseconds, and so that would match my delta x. And so if I run it now and just wait a little bit, let a little bit of data get generated, then hit the stop button, this graph is going to be pretty near to real time. In other words, these values down here might actually be pretty close to the actual time that elapsed during that generation of the data. Now, the reason why I keep saying approximate and almost is it can't be exactly 0.1 milliseconds because we are running on a computer that has to do other things like service the mouse and the keyboard and make sure the operating system is still working. And so this time might be a little bit off. It might not be a big deal on the tenth of a second time scale, but if you're looking for very precise timing, this is not the way to do it because it's just approximate here. So in either case, we're about done with this video here. I've shown you a whole other way of making graphs in LabVIEW that you generate the data and then look at the graph when you're done, and you do have a bit more control over this x-axis. As I conclude here, I just want to point one thing out in the context help here. If I look at the waveform graph again, it turns out that the, the, the name waveform does mean something special in LabVIEW. It's a special data type that always exists as follows here. It's an x naught, a delta x, and a y array, and those things bundled together make the so-called waveform data type. Um, for graphing or processing as you might expect. But if you want to make a waveform, you sort of have to tell it what's on the x-axis, what's on the y-axis, then off you go. So if you look around in the signal processing area right here, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here, waveform generation, waveform conditioning, waveform measurements. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do in there. Like waveform generation will make you, here's tones and noise, here's you can program in a formula or a sine wave and so on. And then signal processing is very powerful in lab. You can do things like uh, you can filter out waveforms, a Butterworth filter, a Chevy Chev filter in there. And there's also things like when the measurements in here, you can look at uh, average values, VRMS, and that sort of thing. There's even some Fourier transform information here. So that this is all has to do with something called a waveform in LabVIEW. It means something now. And it's always this combination of a X naught, a delta X, and a Y array.